What's up guys, got another video review for you. This time we're taking a look at Generation 1 Headmaster Hardhead. So this guy is one of the four main Autobot Hardhead uh, Headmasters. Um, like I said before, Chrome Dome, Brainstorm, Highbrow and him uh, make up the four, the four main Headmasters and Fortress Maximus, but he's a different story. Um, so as you can see, he is this heavily armored tank with the three blasters with the one ginormous one, the two smaller ones. Um, he's on wheels. These tank treads, these are chrome. And this chrome is very, very, very nice. Not chipped at all. Not faded, nothing. It's exactly how I bought him. He's pretty, pretty darn nice. Stickers are all still pretty nice. I haven't had to change the stickers. Pretty happy with him. So here are the wheels. These dinky little small wheels, but he actually rolls okay. Not bad, right? Um, so yeah, his, if we go up in the cockpit, we fold the cockpit back, and you can actually keep the weapons on and unfold the cockpit, which is pretty cool. Inside, he's kind of chilling, is his headmaster, Duros. Or like I said before, if you follow the Japanese continuity, it's hard, hard head is, he is hard head, and this is his transtector. If you follow the US, he's Duros. Um, I remember the cartoon him being one of the head nebulon, too. Don't know if that's factual or not, but I'm putting it in there. So anyway, take a look at him. Same posability, same articulation as every other headmaster. See nice molded arms in there. Um, knees are locked together, feet are separate. So there he is, and we'll transform him real quick. There's him. Take a look at him attached later. So yeah, so take another quick look. Kind of funny to see a green tank, but hey, what are you gonna do? Still kind of menacing to see this coming down the street. So, yeah, first we'll take the guns off. I don't know if it's just mine, somebody hacked this together, you know, uh, piecemealed it together. But when his guns are on, you can see that they're both identical. The hollowness is on the both on the inside at the same time. You would think that they would have one side on each side be hollow. So like when he holds it, the outside would be full and the insides would be hollow. So I don't know if they're all like this. I mean, it makes sense from a cost perspective that you know they would just make one kind of gun. So I'm not that's but this is exactly how he came. So I'm not too sure. So I haven't been able to compare it to anybody else. So to transform this guy, he's actually got kind of a cool transformation um, in the feet. So you just fold them in half. Fold the cockpit back. Come over to the feet. What you do is it's on this um, accordion hinge. So you unfold it and then straighten it back down along his leg. Same thing on this side. That's pretty unique for uh, G1. There weren't too many of those. And what you want to do is in the feet you want to push up to let the feet the foot out. So just push up on here and it'll pop it out. It's a little easier. So then the hands are underneath. They just flip out. Flip out. Cannon just kind of goes whatever way you want to pose it. This guy's pretty big. So let's. You know how I like to do with the headmasters. Flip his chest piece open. And we yell, uh, head on. And we plug him in. And there's his tech specs. So he's slow. He's incredibly strong. And he's kind of dumb. Kind of fits him. Uh, he was he wasn't the fastest, but he was incredibly strong. Um, but he wasn't that dumb. I would have put his intelligence a little higher, so we can fold that back up. Take a look at his face. It's pretty accurate. It's more accurate than like Chrome Dome. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. 
So he is very big, especially with his giant cannon. But that's what I like about him. I like his giant cannon. Another thing that's weird is this, the, pel the posts in his hands are square. There's a round post, like, inset. So they fit in just fine. So articulation. Nothing at the head. Arms swivel all the way around. No elbows. Fists can move down for the transformation. I don't know why you want to shoot. So you can shoot somebody behind you. Don't know why you want to do that. Nothing at the waist. Um, feet can move in for the transformation. So that's about it. They can pivot up to for the, for, for the transformation. But that's just, like I said, just for the transformation. So he is very, very, very bricky. Look from the back, he's kind of hollowy. Though the cockpit does kind of fill it out a little bit. But like I said previously in other videos, you don't look at the backs of G1 figures. Sorry, I can't really get this guy on one frame because he's too big. So, size comparison, grind rod, and you guessed it, Hearts of Steel Thundercracker, because that's what I've got lying around over here. So yeah, I mean, if you're a Headmasters fan, you have to get this guy. If you had to get one Headmaster, at least on the Autobots, I would probably get, so far, from the ones I have, either him or Chrome Dome. I would try to get him first, because I really do, I really do dig him. He is very cool. Let me just pull back for a second. So I can at least get him in frame. He is very, very big. As you can, as you can see, he is quite large. So yeah, just want to show you real quick. His I'm all in frame. You know what I didn't test? It's yeah. I don't think his rub symbol works. Oh well. Uh, luckily, I have plenty more of those. In case you didn't know, he's an Autobot. Never really made sense. Anyway, well, I'm rambling. So yeah, if you can find him, pick him up. He's a little bit more expensive than the others. Um, I guess he's more rare. I don't know why, but I mean, um, things to look out for is make sure the chrome is intact. Stickers, who cares? You can get repo labels. But um, the number one thing is make sure that you can find if you do buy this guy. Try to get the chrome as intact as possible. So yeah, this has been the video review for G1 Headmasters Hardhead.